Hey, pals, you know what you should do? You should come hang out with us on Facebook. Go check out our Facebook page, facebook.com slash go with the heat. Come hang out with us. Come talk to us. Let's talk to 80s. Let's talk Miami Vice. Let's talk to greatness that when Miami Vice was king. And you know what? While you're at it, you should go check out the website, go with the And you could find those brand new feeds that we just set up exclusively for this week in Vice and the music segment only feed. Also, shoot us an email, go with the heat at gmail.com. Let us know what you think about this episode that you're hearing right now. We would love to hear from you. Email us, go with the heat at gmail.com. And also let us know, we're tossing around the idea of doing some live watch parties using Discord. Let us know, would you be interested in doing something like that? Hanging out with us while we live watch one of the episodes and we can all chat as we go through this episode. But pals, instead of talking about how you can come hang out with us, why don't we just stop acting like chumps and get on with the show? Hello and welcome to Go With The Heat. I'm Dominic. And I'm John. I'm Melissa. And this is your cultural guide to the phenomenon that was Miami Vice. This week we're talking about season three, episode 18, titled Lend Me Your Ear, which is, I just, I've been laughing the entire time with this name of this episode. <laughs> <laughs> I see what they did there. <laughs> They're clever. It originally premiered on February 27th, 1987. It is written by Dick Wolf, so that might explain why I actually really enjoyed this episode. The catch that I'm going to get to at the very end of this. <laughs> I felt like this episode was needed a Law & Order episode after it. <laughs> yeah, to figure out what happened really, what really happened after. Yeah, you, well, you know, to, to try to see if the DA was going to try and prosecute Duddy or not. <laughs> it was directed by James Quinn, who has two more episodes coming in one in this season, one in the future. So he'll also direct Viking Bikers from Hell and Amen Send Money. The big thing is that he's also the assistant director on 11 other episodes. Yeah, so he's everywhere. Yeah, he is really, really experienced with Miami Vice. <laughs> all right sean i mentioned that we have a returning music artist but when he was here he wasn't a musician when he was in vice what do you got for us this week in music we have the song risk yourself by bruce buck buck willis buck buck who uh, who has who appeared earlier in the show as a guest star but now we have him in our music i have to say this set me off on a tangent looking up Bruce Willis music and I was quite surprised at not only the volume of music and the range of music but just how successful it was too. This particular song actually got all the way up to number five on the Hot 100. Give you a little bit of idea of background because we already talked about uh, Walter when he was a guest star as far as career wise. I want to talk about the music. At the time when he recorded this he was starring on the TV show Moonlight. He was really just kind of coming out in, in his own. This album, The Return of Bruno, which was released in 87 under the Motown label, it was a companion piece to an HBO special of the same name. That HBO special was a, a mockumentary starring Bruce as his alter ego, Bruno Gradolini, a legendary <laughs> blues singer who influenced a number of uh, musicians who actually appear in the film itself. Those musicians include El Elton John, Phil Collins, Brian Wilson of the Beach Boys, John Bon Jovi, Paul Stanley A Kiss, the Bee Gees, and Ringo Starr, among others. Wow. It's listed as an eclectic gathering of R&B music. It's Bruce with backing musicians of Booker T. Jones, the Porner Sisters, and even the Temptations. That is a crazy cast and his involvement yeah. with some crazy people. They went all out for this. The album itself peaked at number 14 on the Billboard 200. As I said, the song uh, featured a duet with June Porner. Respect Yourself made it to number five. It, this is... My favorite, though, uh, mu mu reviews from critics were, were rather mixed, though. Uh, People Magazine gave it a B plus, but said it was surprisingly okay, and Willis can't shout songs quite as well as Don Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the last thing I'm going to say about it is it, it actually reminded me a Woody Allen flick from uh, 99 called Sweet and Low Down, which was a mockumentary of Emmett Ray, a 30s jazz guitarist played by Sean Penn. It, it's kind of funny. It reminded me of that 
movie, but now I'm kind of thinking like that movie was almost inspired by this in a way. Bruce Willis, uh, much more musically inclined than I've ever given him credit for. That so, is a big rabbit hole to go down on YouTube too. I recommend it. If you have the time, it's kind of fun. Our next song is Climb by Peter Himmelman. Peter Himmelman is a Minnesota native singer, songwriter, film and TV composer. Played in the Minneapolis indie rock band Sussman Lawrence. Actually got their name from a character from a public access TV show called Steamroller, in which Peter Himmelman, uh, way back in the day, it, it, so in 1985, he got his first deal for his first solo record on Island Records. Sussman Lawrence Band became the Peter Himmelman Band, and he pretty much became his own solo act. He'd get regular rotation on MTV in the early 90s, and then pretty much moving on from the 90s would become known mostly for his work on in television and uh well his work in television i'm not gonna give he did form uh, film scores i didn't really recognize any real big film although i did enjoy the name he did the film score for uh the movie porn and chicken <laughs> so but he, he's actually as far as his tv work uh he was nominated for an emmy for his song best kind of answer in 2002 that appeared on an episode of judging amy himmelman who was a composer for that for the show i like that um, show <laughs> he also he was also a composer for bones on fox which is from seasons one to four which you know in my opinion was probably the best uh, as far as the music's concerned for that show i'm a fan of bones he was grammy nominated for his kids album my green Height. <laughs> okay <laughs> and in 2011 he began working with the brands mcdonald's gap and banana republic to help them achieve better communication through innovation and leadership uh, using songwriting. So some kind of company that, you know, teaches leadership. He was also the creative force in the live internet show called Famous uh, Furious World in that ran from 2008 to 2010. It featured live music with, with his band, video segments that range from philosophical to comedy. So moving on, we get to our third song called Be My Enemy by The Water Boy. The Water Boys are an Irish, Scottish folk rock band formed in Edinburgh in 1983 by Scottish musician Mike Scott. Scott released a number of uh, solo recordings in late 81 to early 82. Those solo recordings would actually lead to him forming the short-lived and the Red and the Black, with future members of the Water Boys. So in 83, the label, who at the time was thinking they were getting a solo record, would actually get the first debut album of the Water Boys, formerly the Red and the Black. They would take the name of the band from a Lou Reed song called The Kids off the album Berlin. They would add keyboardist Carl Wallinger. Their early music, their first three albums, would be known as their big music, stage they would tour supporting bands like the pretenders and u2 so in 85 winston would leave to join the band china crisis the trio would add wickham's on violin after hearing a demo he did with Sinead O'Connor. Kind of important because that would be as they released their third album, which sold better than the earlier two, but promotion efforts would be stalled when they would refuse to appear on the show Top of Pops because they didn't want to have to lip sync their song. So toward the end of this tour for that third album, Carl Wallinger would leave to start his own band called World Party. That would lead to the more reggae phase uh, or what they call the gaggle taggle band era <laughs> of the water boys it would begin with Rickham moving to Dublin and he would get super into traditional folk music and so their next few albums would be mixed among critics and it would eventually start the disillusion of the band. So going into the early 90s they would break up with Scott trying to go solo until the Scott would resurrect the band, but name only, because it would be him with a bunch of new members, occasionally releasing and touring all the way up until, two, I mean, even in 2015, he released a new album called Mo Modern Blues. Waterboy's still out there, still floating around, but just not the original members. So you remember when I was mentioning about that guy they hired who had worked with Sinead O'Connor? Yeah, and you were like, and he was in a band And then that other guy left to start his own bad, band 
band. Yeah, yeah. I was like, huh, that name sounds really familiar. World Party. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, Carl, Carl Wallinger from the Water Boys would start World Party, who would be our next song in the episode, The Ballad of the Little Man. After leaving the Water Boys in 1986, Wallinger would start the band World Party. He would record his debut album, Private Revolutions, at his house. And it would end up yielding two minor hits in the UK, Private Revolution and the song Ship of Fools. But Ship of Fools, even though it was only a minor hit in the UK, would do much better internationally. It would reach number four in Australia, number 21 in New Zealand, and number 27 in the US, becoming his only international hit. While recording his first and second album, though, aided Sinead O'Connor in recording her debut album, the 1998 the Lion and the Cobra, the then unknown O'Connor would guest appear on both of World Party's first and second albums because of it. There's a lot of crossover here. So, you see here. there? You see? <laughs> yeah, quite a bit of crossover. World Party, it may not have been huge success, still launched the career of Sinead O'Connor. Wallinger to the release albums, it, but with mostly just success in the UK. And then after he would take a three-year hiatus to pursue solo projects away from World Party, he would actually suffer an aneurysm in 2001 that would leave him unable to speak. After five years of rehab, he would re-emerge on the scene playing his first show in almost a decade at the festival South by Southwest in 2006. And they just pick up right where he left off. That in is 2000, crazy. he would tour in support of Steely Dan. It's really cool that he was able, after an aneurysm left him without being able to speak, he was able to respond like that. In 2007, he toured in support of Steely Dan during their Australian leg of their tour. In 2009, he would tour the West Coast doing shows like Bumper Shoot. And in 2012, he would release like the world party ultimate collection still making music there, there you have our music there was way more crossover in this music segment than i thought there was going to be i was like i saw the lists of bands and i'm like this is all weird i don't know what any of these people are and then it turns out they're like they all know each other <laughs> and it yep. all goes back to bruce willis somehow <laughs> big thank you to bruce willis for managing to drag phil collins back into my music uh, thank you <laughs> All right, well, let's go talk about our final thoughts on this episode. I'm not sure where everyone stands, so let's go talk this one out. So, and that's going to do it for us this week. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Miami Vice and Go With The Heat. We would love to hear from you. Email us, goWithTheHeat at gmail.com or tweet at us at Go With The Heat. Let us know what your thoughts are on this episode and let me know what your thoughts are on the modern parallels that I've talked about when it comes to hacking phones or computers. Let me know what your thoughts are on that. Email me, go with the heat at gmail.com or tweet at us, go with the, at go with the heat. Make sure to check out the website, go with the heat.com. You can find all the show notes, the music videos to all the music, and you can find our feeds Did I mentioned that we have a separate feed that's just for the music segment. So if you want to get just that, you can subscribe to the feed. If you want to get just this week in vice, we have a feed for that as well. Dedicated feeds just for those shows. Go check it out. Go with the heat.com. That's going to do it for us this week. We hope you enjoyed this episode and we'll see you all next time. Bye, pal.